she came home one day and she said, what are you eating? She said, just some leftovers. And she said, honey, that's dog food. <laughs> that's dog food. What? And so he freaked out a little bit at first, but he was like, I like it. You know, I've been eating it for, he'd been doing it for quite a while. And she goes, that's terrible for you. You can't eat just dog food. He said, I think it's good. And next time we went to the doctor and uh, he went to doctor and doctor said, you got to stop that. That's going to kill you. And sure <laughs> eating, enough, eating it, the dog food. Yes. And sure enough, it did. He died from eating the dog food. Not exactly. He was um, cleaning himself in a parking lot and a truck backed over him. Cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> like licking. <laughs> yes. Yes, it right, is. Right now. What's this whole thing? Um, I don't know if you've seen this. And I don't know that, I mean, because I looked at an article and then I looked at something else. I don't know that I got to the bottom of it. Some type of a glitch in the Obamacare system. Yeah, so... In previous years, if you had a family, let's just, I'll just use an example. Family glitch. A family of four. Let's just say you had a family of four. Yeah. You would log into healthcare.gov. Right. And you would select your plan. Right. Well, let's just say you had a silver plan. Well, you and everyone in your family would be on the same plan. Sure. Well, this year they have a button called groups. So you log into healthcare.gov, uh -huh. you enroll in your coverage, and it shows you that you're in a group. Let's just say you picked a silver plan. Uh-huh. Well, you can select to add groups and when you add a second group you can put any of the members in that group and select an entirely separate plan now think about it let's just say that your wife gets sick all the time or you know that she has a known chronic right. condition or whatever you're able to get her the type of plan that she sure, needs get her the coverage. gold plan yeah you can get her the gold plan <laughs> you can take the bronze plan with a right. high deductible contribute to your hsa and the thing is is the subsidies for individuals who qualify for subsidies, let's just say for the family of four, the subsidies, $1,500 a year. Uh -huh. Well, when everyone has to enroll in the gold plan because you have someone with a chronic illness, uh -huh. your premium might be $2,000 a month. Right. So you still, if you have $1,500 worth of subsidy, you still right. have to come out of pocket 500 bucks. Right. But if you can enroll the one person in the gold plan that needs uh -huh. to be, you're in the bronze plan. Maybe your kids are in a bronze plan or sure. something like that, depending on, you know, Right. How often they get sick or go to the doctor or right. whatever. And now your premium's around fifteen hundred bucks and your out of pocket cost is nothing. See, now this is along the same vein, but inside, you know, group health plans, just from being a benefit broker for so many years, people go, We need all these options. We need multiple options. You know, you need to have a low deductible and a high deductible and maybe even a higher deductible. We need to have three options. And I'd always tell my clients, it's that's super popular. Because everyone goes, well, we want a whole bunch of choice, right? That makes sense. But I tell the employer, that's a terrible idea. It's terrible. And they go, why is that a bad idea? I said, think about what we're talking about, okay, in a health insurance population. Who is paying for the sick people? The healthy people. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we got most people. Let's just say it's 80-20. It's the purpose of the individual mandate. Right. Exactly. You got the healthy people spam for the, exactly mm -hmm. same type thing on a group plan basis. And so the healthy people are paying for the sick people. All right. So, but then what we say is, all right, no, we want to section these. We want to have multiple plans. All right. So what ends up happening is you do that exact same thing. You have a low, medium, high. So what you do is if you are healthy, you go, well, I want to pay low. And if you're sick, I want to pay the high. Why? Okay. So think about the sick person. Why do they want to pay the high? So that they'll pay less than the other plans. So if they're paying less, who's paying more again? The healthy, by definition. Right. If, if, if the high plans allow that 20% to go there and then pay less, who's paying for that? Them, the healthy. And so what ends up happening is the healthy subsidize the sick to even a greater degree. Through premiums? Yes, absolutely. And through, and through when you look at the claims run, because no one runs it appropriately. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would set like, if you had a large enough group, if you, they would say, well, we're going to price it appropriately. It's going to be more expensive through employee contributions. Yeah, I understand. But it, you can't get there for how, how much more it'll end up costing. You can't, you can't get there from an employee contribution standpoint. So it's a similar type conversation, but yes, yeah, subsidizing, but it's, it's playing the game. Helps right? keep so, benefit brokers in a job. Well, sort of. Well, yeah. I mean, when you're looking at something that complex, of mm -hmm. course, because you need to have someone who has a level of expertise in it. But I always hated it. Like, not from the management of it. That was fine. I just thought it was stupid. I don't like to do things that I think are stupid. Mm. And so I teach a client, you know, there are, there are times to maybe have multiple plans. It's just my opinion. There are times to have it. 
typically what I like to say is your time to have multiple plans is when you're trying to move to one or the other. If you're trying to move to a high deductible plan, okay, over two, three year period, maybe you need two plans and you migrate into one. And then you have this one that, that you try to work because you can change employee contributions a lot of different ways there, you know, based upon different factors. And, um, that's kind of rabbit trailing on it. But anyhow, I've always, the, the subsidizing your health insurance, the healthier are always subsidizing the sick. But so this right. is just interesting because it's the same thing. Yeah. There's, it's a system, right? What do we do? We find a way to take advantage of the system. Yeah. So you can, you can <laughs> tailor it to say, okay, what's the subsidy I get? Uh huh. And let's just tailor the plan to where I have no monthly out of pocket costs for premiums. And then my subsidy yes. covers all the premiums for everyone in my family. Right. But I have coverage. Sure. If I need it and the people who really need it are on the proper plan. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and that was not an option in the last, th this is the first time that this has ever been an option. People are finding it. And so the fam, uh, cause I had heard something about it. I was like, what is this? It's called groups. Groups. Yeah. It's, under a, it, okay. it's a new option. Interesting. Yep. So you have to pick your first plan and then it'll show you your groups and you'll uh -huh. be, your whole family will be in one group and you can add another group. But if you have five kids, Right. You get to add five more groups. Are your parents on the exchange? No. no They're not, on Medicare, right? Not anymore. So yeah, Medicare. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's they, good. They were for a year or two though. And, uh -huh. it, and it, it, it worked out well. I do yeah. know, I do know several people that I've helped actually enroll. Okay. Uh, using healthcare.gov. It's pretty self-explanatory, mm -hmm. uh, very user-friendly. They do email updates, reminders, especially around open enrollment. You get a lot of that stuff. Sure. Back when that used to be allowed. You can't do it anymore. Like you can't, we don't want to even <laughs> just think it right. The, the administration has done a lot to keep people from getting enrolled in these plans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, they exactly. shortened open enrollment. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. These plans are terrible plans. <laughs> yeah. Because most people, most people that I've talked to I actually saw this prep sheet for debates over Thanksgiving holiday. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 but you know, it was, it was a left leaning news source uh -huh. and it was about debating healthcare and Medicare uh -huh. for all, but, um, it's shocking. And I was in this pool of people, you know, just five years ago, the people who don't understand what Obamacare is sure, affordable care act, Obamacare, sure. like what these plans are. They think it's like an entirely separate insurance company, sure. like a government run insurance company. It's a certain type of insurance. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just not, it's, it's not, it's not what it is. They're just, they're just paying these carriers People. on your behalf. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're uh, what is the whole thing? There's they're unconscious incompetent. They don't know. And they don't know that they don't know. <laughs> What's that story about the, the, um, the guy that played football with you? Oh yeah. My, the football college football coach said he couldn't get his player to do anything. He said, damn it, boy. He goes, I don't know if you're ignorant or apathetic. And coach looked back and said, Coach, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> Have you ever heard that whole thing about, um, I can't remember if it's Brian Tracer who does it. He said, you, when you it start, you first start being an unconscious incompetent, you're just an idiot. And you don't even know that you're an idiot mm. until you read something. And then you start to realize that you're an idiot. So you become a conscious incompetent. You're aware of your incompetence. Yes. And you start working on it and trying to get better until you become consciously competent and you do that for long enough so that you're an unconscious competent. So you don't have to think about it. You just do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So that is, that is what I'm trying for my kids. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying I'm, to just, you just, you just tie your shoes and change your underwear and brush your teeth. I'm still on that curve. The more, the more books I read, changing underwear. No, yeah. <laughs> changing underwear is I, I, I'm getting that right. Like 80% of the time, but the more books I read, the more I'm just like, Oh man. I don't know very much. I know. Uh, I am not sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. I read another book and another right. book and I, I'm, I'm not feeling more intelligent. Exactly. <laughs> I'm feeling like the more you, small more you fish. know, the more you know, you don't know. <laughs> exactly. A small exactly. fish in a real big pond. <laughs> no doubt. That's exactly right. <laughs> but someone who is smart, you know, I, I nerd out about this guy, Elon Musk. Did you see them release the new truck? I saw him throw a big metal ball yeah. through the window that was supposed to, was it supposed to be like iron plated or whatever? That was an uh oh. I think somebody probably got fired over that one because, <laughs> because Elon Musk was up there. He played it off pretty well, but uh huh. Cause there's two big, huge gash cracks in the, yeah, so the, the truck is weird. Look, someone said it looks like the graphics from a PlayStation one. 
<laughs> like how cars used to look. What about you? Think there'll be a whole bunch of those in Monk's Corner, where you're from, Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Here's the thing: I got a, I had a message from a buddy of mine from uh -huh. Monk's Corner, and uh, I sent him, I sent him this video of this truck pulling a Ford F one fifty backwards. Right, I know, I saw that. Right, they did that for the, uh, for the big unveil, and I sent him that, and his, his response board came back and said, "We'd love to do that. Let's 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 do it for real." So we'll see. Yeah. So I sent it to my buddy from Monk's Corner. And uh -huh. He responded crazy. He goes, you know, that's the kind of shit Elon Musk needs to be using his brain on. Not trying to get people to Mars. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pickup trucks. We got big deer in the woods. We got to get out of there. <laughs> and when I shoot a hog, he's a thousand pounds. We got to find a way to get his ass out of there. So think about this. <laughs> that that truck. So, th so the base model is $40,000, which is affordable. A lot of yeah. these these uh, Chevy Silverados and Ford F one fifties, these things are fifty grand, and the Ford Raptor is eighty five thousand dollars. So it starts at forty grand, but that only gets you the one the one sure. single battery, and I think it only has a range on one charge of like two hundred miles. Yeah. Then you can go to fifty thousand dollars, you get two batteries, and uh, you can go like three hundred miles. And they have a model that's think about this the three seventy thousand dollars, and it goes five hundred miles, and it goes zero to sixty in two point nine seconds. God, it's fast, man. You're out running Lamborghinis at 2.9. No joke. That's nuts. Mm hmm Because it just goes like a golf cart. You hop in your golf cart, it's like... Yeah, it's instant torque. It's right. instant torque. There's no delay. There's no combustion in the engine that has to right. transfer to a drive shaft, transfer to the wheels. Like, right. There's no combustion. It's just boom, like an RC car. Right. It just goes. Zzz. Yeah. Oh, man, I won't... My son to get one of those for Christmas. An RC car? Yeah. I was thinking about that too. The but best. My whole family races them. But the problem is, is so much, so many of them are, are obsessive. Gator. And, and like, well, yeah. Yeah. Him, but also my cousins that race boats and things like that. Oh, yeah. And they end up spending thousands of dollars. They've so already spent thousands fun. of dollars. So it's, and then they're tearing the motors apart and, and taking weight off, like filing the tires down to, to shave an ounce off the tires so they can outrun you. And you, you can't compete with people like that. Exactly. But here's the thing on that Tesla truck. They took a sledgehammer, slammed it into the door. Uh -huh. And he's trying to show that they made the truck out of the same metal that they make the uh, SpaceX spaceships from. Okay. Man, that's awesome. You can't break the door. Then, then they also infuse some type of metal into the glass. So you're not supposed to break that. But they took this big metal ball bearing the size yeah. of a softball and hit like, it. When is that ever going to happen? Right. Now, I mean, that would have gone through a normal window. Sure. Yeah. It didn't go through that window, but it did shatter it. Yeah. What about this, though? They sold 200,000 of those trucks in the last week at at least 40K a piece. Right. Right. So that's that's pretty cool. But So how many? 200,000? 200,000. What is that? So 50 grand to 20,000. Is that a billion dollars? I if think, it was 50 grand? Yeah, because I was, cause I was thinking about 40 or? grand. It was like 800 million, I think. Okay, yeah. Someone watching this is like, those guys don't know how to do math. I think it's a billion dollars. Right, I think it's, I I think think it's, it's a billion, billion dollars. Yeah, in a week, in a it's week a in, in sales, it's pretty awesome. But here's a thought: Jim Cramer's going to buy a Tesla for his wife. I saw it today. He's like, "I give up. The damn car is too good. It's just I hate. I have, he's been hating on Elon Musk for a long time. You have to conform. He's like, I just I'm, I can't. I can't take it anymore for my family. The car is incredible. Yeah, I'm buying one. Here, what happens when that thing wrecks into you? When it's made of that metal that you can't break with a sledgehammer, yeah, and it's going ninety miles down the road, now that there, I haven't seen anything on that as far as like crash test reviews or things like that. Right. What happens if it hits a now? Obviously, normal car hits a pedestrian. That's a problem. But if it hits a, if it hits my Escalade, what's going to happen? Well, yeah. Is it, is it going to go straight through me? Is it going to cut through? <laughs> right. Is it going to cut your car in half? Right. Exactly, like a damn can opener. Yeah. So not not just that, but what does it do to the people inside of it? Because like when I, I got when I when I was in that bad wreck a couple of years ago, yeah. you know the car is designed to kind of crush sure. crush like a can to a certain extent, sure. and, it, and it absorbs a lot of the impact. Right. If that one's solid. Yeah, it'd be, you know, I'm not sure about the physics of it, but it seems like it wouldn't be able to absorb the impact as much. I don't know. I'm going to keep my eye on it's that. It's built though. like my fraternity brothers. Crush. <laughs> Crush. Crush. <laughs> Crush that can. It's your car. This is my car right here. Yeah, I'm just going to drive through yours. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to see. They're going to be on the road. For real. Mm-hmm. And they're pretty weird looking, but I bet you they're incredible. Oh, like a spaceship. I want one. 
I want really? one. Oh yeah, I would drive that thing. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Say it to me, kids. Yeah, that's true. It's They'd be like, "What a tap in? Where's the USB port?" Oh, you okay. get out of the driveway, I'm like, "Ew!" Like, like, yeah. Everyone's got their phones. There's Wi-Fi, and yeah, who knows what the hell? The is truck going probably on. has its own Wi-Fi. Exactly. Yeah, you probably just does. You put the kids in the bed of the truck. Well, that's true. You used to do that when I was a kid. <laughs> me too. I know. Me I know too. with you. You crawl out the back window. <laughs> yeah. Take the sliding glass window and yeah. crawl out the back. Yeah. And if it's too, you know, like it's too windy, you just get up against the yeah. back of the, the the cab right there. That's right. Daddy will put you back there in a second. Yeah. Put you on the back. Get, get back here with the dog. <laughs> Dad, this is interstate. We're doing like 80. It's all right. <laughs> That's so fun, though. When you're growing up, you it get to be in the back of the pickup fun. truck. Oh, my god. Doing 40, 50 miles an hour. If you hit anything, you were dead. Yeah. And mom be like, can can Marcus go with us? Yeah, sure. Let him hop in the back. <laughs> the parents are like, yeah, let him back in the back of the truck. Yeah, really good. Just great. riding around. I remember after football practice, there's 10 of us. Football coach dropping people off. There's 10 of us in the back of the yeah. truck. And hypothetically, if you had something to throw, if you were in the back of the truck, right. and you could throw it. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, if you hit something. Right. That would hypothetically be fun. I did that and got caught one time. Did you? Yeah. I don't know how I got caught, but um, I never did stuff like that. I was a really good kid. <laughs> one time. I was busted. with the guy who decided, I'm gonna go, we're going to egg some cars. Mm. And so I'd be damned if we don't egg cars. And I'm no much, I'm at home. I just pull home. Mom already knows. Like someone's already called her and told her. <laughs> There's no cell phones. Like how do they know? I don't know. And um, I felt terrible because I was like, I never do this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but we all do stupid stuff, don't we? Yeah. You get to you get to have good stories to tell about it. You, you do it when you're young and you're not held to the same accountability standards. <laughs> Yeah, well, some people out there have no accountability standards, which is why they hate these transparency rules that are coming out. <laughs> uh, the, is, it, is it the American? I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this, but I think it was the American Hospital Association, some association of hospitals, is. is like, oh yeah, they're no, all no bueno. Right? No, no. no. What, show prices? That's a terrible idea. Right. <laughs> It's, it's, here's my it's a really hard thing to argue because you, you back up from all the junk and you go, okay, you know, you have to go buy something and you don't know how much it's going to cost. It's really hard to argue. It's a really bad idea for people to know how much it's going to cost. Like, how do you win that argument? Yeah. I think there's so many people who haven't even contemplated it. It's yeah. just a matter of here's, well, here's the thing. Just having this, these discussions, these discussions, I, you know, I had a level head. Uh, Warren, my son, two years old, uh -huh. not quite two years old, has an ear infection. We took him to the urgent care the other day. Mm -hmm. Very blessed. $40 copay, was able to get antibiotics, had to pay $5 for his whole course of antibiotics. Sure. He's at home. He's happy. Wakes up the next morning and his eye is swollen shut. Not sure why. My wife calls me panicking and she says, you know, I have to take him to the ER. I have to take him to the ER. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, you know, whatever, whatever the cost sure, is, we have yeah. to make sure the little boy's okay. But I hang up the phone, I think for a second, and I go, I bet there's a better option. Right. <laughs> so MUSC is right there in Charleston, and we live in Somerville, so that's 30 minutes to MUSC, and his sure. eye swelling. MUSC has pediatric centers all around the low country classified as urgent care centers. Right. So rather than going to the actual ER. Sure. Go to that's going to gonna probably send you there anyway, because he's two. Right. So that there's a pediatric urgent care center five miles up the road. Right. I call her. I say, hey, turn around and just go there. Right. It was an after-hour center, but they opened at 3 o'clock. She goes by there. They didn't even collect a copay. Yeah. And so that was just a sure us talking about transparency and me understanding what it costs, whereas we might have had a couple thousand dollar bill. Yeah. From, People from, from go, ER. that's just scratching the surface. That, yeah, that's a, just a minor incident, but, but it's a real-life scenario that happened in the last exactly. 24 hours. But it's still, here's the whole thing. You're kind of in and around the industry and whatever, and it still impacts you. I mean, I don't know how many times I've gotten caught into like, well, I don't know, your kids are sick, I'm just go to the emergency room. Even though you know when it's your kid and when there's something going on, it, you just do, you know, if you've got the money, you just go. And... You later you figure out whether you got enough money. <laughs> you don't have any idea what's going to cost. I've heard, I've heard stories. I mean, I, it's, there's definitely man. It's going to be impactful. There's I've heard stories of these people who have sat outside of a hospital and just saving for a house or whatever, and they just got their credit repaired, and they know that if they go in that hospital, 
their credit is shot because yeah. they're not going to be able There's to pay. There's so many terrible stories. And I mean, and healthcare is just a difficult one altogether. But the whole thing, and just in regard to just the transparency piece, is uh, I was actually speaking to an attorney yesterday. He's outside counsel for SIA, Self Insured Institute of America. Incredible guy, super knowledgeable. But he was talking about how surprising how detailed the regulations, like the proposal regulations, are. He said that caught me, and he goes, I think everybody by surprise in that it is incredibly detailed. It's not. It's not just cursory. I mean, they've been working on this for quite a while, and it will be ridiculously transformative. But I would, I mean, I've been in, in and around this industry for 20 years. All I've done is employee benefits for two decades at this point. We're going to have one of two things. We're either going to have some things that are uncomfortable for lots of people in this industry, or it's going to become government run. Because you start thinking about the stuff in the periphery that we've done to control cost, the gray area stuff. There's no more gray area, right? We've, we've handled a lot of stuff, not perfectly. There's always stuff that's coming in and out, but what we, haven't we handled price? We've handled access. We've handled the ability to get insurance. We've handled Obamacare. We've handled lots of stuff. Have we handled price? No. Haven't even talked about price. Why haven't we talked about price? Cause it's complicated. Yeah. And you've got lots of people that have invested tons of money to in their networks and in Hiding, I mean, selfinsuredreporting.com, obviously, you know, is a company that I own. You would know the amount of conversations that we end up having with insurance carriers and even some third-party administrators about self-insured data. Okay, now think about this. We're talking about self-insured plans. Self-insured plans hire someone, say, yeah, we want to use your network and your discounts. Okay, but, you know, we want you to, to pay the claims for us. They can't get the data on what was paid. It's their money. Isn't that weird? It's like, they, now, they, now I grant it. Don't get me wrong. They can't get the data almost like a receipt. They can't even get a receipt from payment that they made. They can, but not without bitching and pissing and moaning. It's, it's unbelievable. It's a struggle. And, and over here, they cry and, oh, well, you know, why do you want it? What, why do you want a receipt? What do you mean? Why, why, why do I want a receipt? Mm-hmm. I just paid $15 million in medical claims last year. That's the reason I want a receipt. Right. And I have shareholders and I have people I have to repeat. I, I want a receipt. Well, well, why? It's ridiculous. And the fact that in this process, the client asked them to provide this months, months for the paperwork piece, the paperwork, just to get to the paperwork. They've already paid the claims. They're just trying to find out what they actually, they're just trying to get a receipt. They're just trying to figure out what it is they've actually paid. Yeah. There's a reason if you, if you want to stop someone from getting to a certain thing, you build a moat, then you Correct. put a castle around it. Correct. Right. So you, the, you make it difficult to get to. Correct. So that people can't get to Correct. it. Right? Now, granted, to be fair to the carriers and what have you, prior to the transparency rules, if they've developed something that's proprietary in there. They need to have the ability to protect that. That's their intellectual capital. I agree with that. But I mean, you can't tell someone who's paying the, the bill that they can't figure out what you're paying. It's just weird. Nothing. It's not going to last. Everyone knows that's not going to last. And so the whole, now the transparency thing to come out now in this way, frankly, by a Republican president is very shocking. You know, and granted, there were some things led up to that earlier this year that gave us an idea that something like this was going to happen, but it's not going to be this detailed. And I mean, they are pitching a bit. But healthcare, rising premiums, healthcare costs was a, was the leader in uh, as far as as far as voter sentiment and in going into the midterms. Yeah. So I mean, they got it. They have to do something. Now, I've made no mistake about it. I think Donald Trump is a complete moron and total head case, but this was genius. I mean, this, this, this is one of those things that you go, this is really smart. And this is when you got to go, well, it's probably why he got elected in the first place is because he is smart. He obviously does some things that are pretty savvy, right? He, this was one that was incredibly savvy. He I obviously think. has a great business mind and what he is doing is creating a market. Yeah. He's creating a market by saying, you know, and that's the thing I, I when it clicked for me, I was like, okay, this is what happens. 
This is what keeps gas stations in check. This is what mm-hmm. keeps grocery stores in check. We don't always price compare, but some people do. Correct. And it's what stops Whole Foods from being able to charge four or five times for the same product. Now, Correct. they do have an inflated rate, but it's within the confines of what the consumer will Correct. accept. Correct. And what it does is when you exploit or, or, or you know bring to the surface or bring to light that someone is way out of line, right. eventually – it forces them back down to whatever the median price should be. Buddy, there's so many games inside. If this thing actually happens, there's going to be so many people fighting. It's going to be unbelievable. And for people, at least like me, it'll be a lit. A lot of these people are my friends, though, to be honest. So it won't be really funny, but it'll be a little bit funny because, as an example, you've had two insurance cares, two major insurance cares. I'm not going to say any names. But let's just say you have two major insurance carriers in a market and they're with a hospital and they, you know, so one goes and says, well, you know, we want the best discounts. We're going to bring you the most patients and volume, which is how all this stuff started in the first place. It's just kind of past its time. And so this other insurance carrier comes. And so everyone's been told stories about what the discount really is. What is it? Well, no, they get a whole lot less discount than you, but everything's secret. We can't tell anybody anything. We have to be very secretive. It's a super secret. And, but everything we hit the table. So we're going to find out. It's like, you know, everyone's internet history is going to be right there. We're going to find out exactly what's going on. And it's going to be interesting because yeah. it's not true. You know, there's so many things that I even know about that I see. I was like, that ain't what, yeah. that isn't even close. And there's so many people fighting to hold that information. We're going to find Hillary's emails. <laughs> exactly. It's in there. Exactly. <laughs> They're definitely in there. There's all kinds of things. Speaking of politics and healthcare leading, you know, leading the conversation going into the reelection and things like that. Did you see the announcement from Google last week? Google Google is restricting political ads on their platform. I did not see that. Which means that they're also restricting political ads on YouTube. Interesting. So for anyone who's who who doesn't understand how the how the ads work is like Facebook does. Yep. You're able to go into you're able to go into a platform like Google through uh-huh. Google AdWords and you're able to create a campaign as a marketer. So if you want to advertise your consulting company any business that you want, sure. you're able to go in and kind of ch- select the audience. You select the region geographically where you want to place the ad, but all these platforms also co- collect uh, political preferences, mm-hmm. right? Um, so you're able to say, I want to go towards a more conservative group or people who are registered Democrats or whatever, and you're able to create an ad that you want to target just to people who lean a certain direction politically. Right. Google completely scrapped that. And said, you can, if it's political wow. content, you can send it out to male, female. You can send it to certain age groups, but you can no longer look at the, the political preferences of a certain audience. Wow. Here's another thing they removed. So you have this feature called matched audiences where you're able to upload an email list. Sure. And specifically send certain content to uh-huh. people whose emails you've collected. Now, a lot of these campaigns, think about it. When you support any politician, sure. they'll collect your email. They, sure. they have these rosters and these these large lists of their supporters. So what this has allowed people to do is you, you can spread propaganda or the truth. I mean, sure. you got you got to give both sides spread, credit. You can spread whatever. Whatever information. But you're able to say, okay, well, these people live on the border and they believe a certain thing. We're going to send them something false about immigrants. Sure. And uh, we have their email addresses, and you can target those people specifically. Not anymore. You, you can't do that. Not with political content on Google, at least. Yeah. And the reason being is because you had all of this Russia meddling with sure. Facebook and things like that. Well, you've seen the stuff with Facebook. You've experienced it. Like if you're going to run anything that's even because you know, the, one of the companies we own together does ACA reporting, ACA reporting service. And so it obviously does ACA reporting because it's, but because it's considered ACA Mm -hmm. that equals Obamacare and Obamacare equals Obama and Obama equals politics. Right. So if you're going to run an ad on Facebook, they have to like, you have to send in what's your license. And I think another identification and then corporate documents, and then they send you a letter to determine whether or not you're actually real and you have to get a code and you have to type that code in and 
It's pretty crazy. Yeah. You have to prove that you are who you say you are and you live within the United States when you, where you say you live. Right. But Facebook is still going to allow you to use the information they collect on someone politically if you go through those that process. I know when I went through it, I mean, I it was tough. I mean, I put in my license, put in my ad, my address, you know, Moscow. They mailed me my my <laughs> they mailed me my thing and I typed it in from Moscow. You know, I visited Ukraine in the process. I think I think it was there with my laptop. Uh, I did it from Ukraine. Typed <laughs> I asked the uh, Ukrainian president for a favor. Right. You know, it, was, it really wasn't a favor. Not if he wanted his, not if he wanted his military aid, yeah, it really he, wasn't a favor. Yeah. I told him he'd get his aids. A buddy of mine, a um, a buddy of mine, Rudy told me he wanted me to meet with this dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Mr. Giuliani gave me a call. Yeah. Mr. G. Yeah. G money. Yeah, I, got, I got a message from Mr. Giuliani. <laughs> so so he says, give him, give him the stuff, uh, and you'll get the money to fight off the Russians. <laughs> So Facebook still lets you run the ads, but check this out. Google was sly because Google made the announcement right before the democratic debate <laughs> because they knew they were going to talk about it. They got free publicity and they brought it up during the debate. Ah. Right. So smart. So think, but here's, I also looked into uh, the other, the other social media platforms. Mm -hmm. So, um, Instagram and Facebook are, are one and the same Snapchat. Uh, let me think. Snapchat says they're going to moderate. They're going to moderate the content. So they will review the content and only content they approve can go out. Wow. And here's, here's the kicker. Twitter says no political content. <laughs> Yet the president huh? of the United States. <laughs> what? Right. So, so Twitter, Twitter says no, no, no political content. Twitter is a genius company. Yes. Yeah, so Trump just uses just uses Twitter wow. all day, and I, th I thought that was pretty odd. That's really odd. Yeah, like what does that even mean? But think about how this impacts. It. Can you do separate ads or only tweets on Twitter? Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I'm I don't even know yeah. because mm -hmm. I don't use Twitter. There's enough of the uh, Twitter headlines in CNBC in the sure. morning and Politico and sure all these. Uh, Did you ever see the South Park episode where? Um, Donald Trump was tweeting to North Korea. It is so worth looking up. I, it I, is I'm, very good. I'm pretty sure I saw it. <laughs> we definitely can't talk about it. I mean, we could, but it's our detriment. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's something that I thought about with uh, political campaigns is each one of these people running have a certain amount of money they can spend on these types of ads. Yeah. Right. But Donald Trump has the entire Republican party. Right. So all of the money that can be pulled together for the entire party, he can. Right. So he's able to run these ads. And I mean, he's, he's been campaigning since day one, since getting off. office. can't take that from him. That guy doesn't stop working. Yeah, I know. And, uh, and so the Democrats are all spread out. And at this point in time, trying to go in the primary, they're fighting, fighting against each other. I guess that's probably what Bloomberg is thinking by running. It's like, I got $50 billion. I don't care. Just pump some money. In I there. can't spend it anyway. How many Facebook ads can See you see how many people I can get to like me for a billion dollars? Yeah. I mean, I, I did the math today. If you want 4 million people in your state to see you and you have $100,000, you can do that. You can run Google ads. I don't know if there'll be individual people, but you'll get, mm -hmm. you can get 4 million views on anything you want to make for $100,000. The question is, are you likable? Yeah. People might hate you. Right. But they'll know you. They'll recognize you. Yeah, that's true. I was just thinking that's, that's pretty powerful for anyone who wants to do it. If they have the money, they can do that. Just spend the money, film themselves, doing anything, crushing that can on their, your head, right. spend a hundred grand and you'll put that in front of an audience of millions. Hmm. Yep. That's where we are. It's pretty amazing. It is pretty crazy. I was like, man, you can get, imagine if you just selected a region for the ad where you just wanted to choose the state you're in. Let's just say you're in, if you're in Maine and you, and you just want to send it to millions of people in Maine. It's crazy. I mean, yeah. everything is crazy. Uh huh. Have you, um, have you done Disney plus? Have you done that? Oh, we just registered. All right. Have you downloaded the apps yet? The apps? I downloaded Disney plus on my phone, but we watch it on the Roku TV. Dude. Well, I did it last. I did it while well, we got Disney plus the other day. I'd already had ESPN plus because all the Wofford football games are obviously on ESPN plus because they're not on ESPN. 
um, well, they have Hulu too. And so I just downloaded both apps. And so literally I was like, before I came here, I had like the Disney plus app on my phone. You're watching Peter Pan. Freaking everything, dude. I mean, it's got, and, and Laura and I were looking at this going, this is incredible. Like, look at all these movies. Like it's got everything. Yes. On here. My son is infatuated with Toy Story and I've watched the original Toy Story. Mm. Not exaggerating, no less than 20 to 25 times in the last sure. two months. But they want $20 on Amazon to buy the second Toy Story. So I finally broke down and bought it because he's going to lay in the bed with me for an hour and watch it. Exactly. And snuggles totally and all that it. kind of stuff. I'm like, let's do it. So I buy it. My wife's like, what you watching? I was like, Toy Story 2. She said, like, get that on Disney+. Plus. We have Verizon. <laughs> What'd you say to me? Well, hold on. Now. now, you're about to teach me something. I have Verizon, too. Do I get it for free? Disney Plus is free. I'm already paying for it. Well, Verizon, so yeah. So Disney, Disney plus is happy about that. Huh? Yeah. You get a one year subscription to Disney plus. See, I thought I remember account. that. Yep. Uh, Taylor finally went in and, and activated it. Uh -huh. You use your same login credentials. I think as we did for Verizon, you get a one year trial. So she just did that last week. So now I have toy story three and every, every other Pixar or Disney movie ever made. Huh? Mm hmm. It's pretty crazy. Uh, Muppets, all that stuff. It happened. Uh, Somebody said that, but I didn't pay attention. It happened three hours after I spent $20 for Toy Story 2. <laughs> exactly. But I'll own it forever now, as long as Amazon Prime is a thing. And Hulu, we were looking at I've never watched Hulu, but mm -hmm. Hulu's got some pretty awesome stuff. Um, that's pretty crazy, though, that like you just get your show on your phone. You want to see the Muppets? You yep. see whatever. Ever since I was a little kid and watching uh, Forrest Gump and all that kind of stuff, I've been a huge Tom Hanks fan. Yeah. To me, he's the greatest actor on the planet. He has a new movie coming out, but keep going. What's the new movie called? Mr. Rogers. Yeah, it came out. I saw oh, it. Oh, it's out? Yep. That's what I was, that's what I was going to talk about. So I've seen everything, Tom, all the way back to big and yeah. all that good stuff. I, I, Tom Hanks, super yes. fan, right? I love the guy. So when it started coming out, I always look at Rotten Tomatoes reviews. Sure. Nine out of ten times, they nail it for me. Uh -huh. Rotten Tomatoes comes out and says that's a 40% movie. I'm Don't not wasting it. my money. Right. They gave it a 96%. Oh, my gosh. And uh, we usually go see horror movies and, sure. and all this kind of stuff. You always leave this. The last movie I saw was The Joker, which was incredibly dark, yeah. amazing acting. Joaquin Phoenix, it's yeah. just incredible. It, it leaves you speechless with like his performance. But uh -huh. you leave the theater going, oh, I don't, feel, I don't feel good about humanity, man. Right. But I was like, I want to... See something and leave feeling great. Sure. You you will feel wonderful after you watch. Really? He he talks to the guy. This doesn't ruin anything, but just think about this, man. He's talking to this guy. Guy's having a little bit of a hard time. And uh, I can't remember the guy's name. Let's just say that the guy's name is Alex. Uh -huh. Guy's talking to him and he's trying to interview him. And he says, uh, he says, Alex, do you know what the most important thing in the world to me is? And he goes, what is it? And he goes, talking to you on the telephone right now and it's just like who does that right <laughs> you know like, wow he's just yeah. speaking to he you he was that kind of a person right now and uh in the in the the premise of the movie without spoiling anything is this magazine reporter wants to do a report on mr rogers and uh -huh. he has notoriously dug up dirt on different people sure no one's inherently good no sure. one's good all the time yeah and uh it's a pretty hard time with Mr. Rogers. He's so authentic and yeah. uh, it is just an, it's, it's a little bit slow, uh -huh. but it will make you cry oh, and then, and then so laugh good. in the next scene and then cry again. And, That's uh, really good. And I, I brushed up because Netflix released a bunch of the old Mr. Rogers I think that's where I saw something that it, that it was coming out. I saw it must have seen it on Netflix. And my, my son, my son loves it, right? The singing and stuff. Yeah. But the way they did the movie. Is like a Mr. Rogers really? episode. So he comes in, you know, sings his Hello, song, neighbors. puts his shoe on, you know, oh, yeah. zips up his, his, his little jacket. I remember it. And he starts talking, but he's narrating the actual movie you're watching. And it goes back and forth within a Mr. Rogers episode. So the oh, way they, that's cool. The way they did it is brilliant. Tom Hanks is fantastic. He crushed it. I mean, when I say he crushed that role, uh -huh. which he does with all of I know, them, right? It's just, wow. Yeah. I loved it. I loved That's it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We'll have to go check that out. You should, man. It's it's a good, it's rare that I go see something in the movies that I'm like, tell people to go That's see. That's worth going to see. I'd say go see it. And just realize cool. it's going to be slow. 
But I think our, our, we're, our brains are programmed for so much violence and action and stuff. Yeah. It's probably not even slow. We're just so acclimated to this crappy program right. we see all the time. Switching subjects, I don't know. I didn't look at it a whole bunch, but there was a new video game that came out that was about <laughs> – this is really switching subjects. Was it called Surgeon? Surgery? It's like a video game. I think I was looking at CNBC. That it appeared, from what I could tell, unless I'm wrong, that you could. It was a. It was a game about surgery. Are there games about surgery now? Like you can, you can do surgery. I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked because VR headsets are a huge thing. Uh huh. And uh, YouTube is a huge thing. For, do you have one? Do I have a VR headset? No, I think it'd be a very, very bad idea for me to buy a VR headset. Really? Uh, especially for the productivity of our company and just me in general as a human being. What? What? You just because you just put your phone in it, right? You oh, click no. your phone in it. No, no. That's those are the VR headsets that they tried and didn't work. Gotcha. They don't even sell those anymore. Gotcha. These are totally immersive experiences where you go to another world. Okay. You put you have a handle here, a handle here, and it used to be that you had to set up these different. Uh, towers that gave you like a point of reference uh -huh. so that you could walk or whatever in place and travel throughout the world and go do what you want. Now the technology uh, is using um, almost like uh, like how your eardrum functions to, to keep you in equilibrium. It's using a similar type of structure within the headset itself so that you just put the headset on and you are in someone else's life or another experience or whatever. So you check out and you accomplished absolutely nothing in real life until you check back in. Wow. Bad idea oh, for that's me. That's nervous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But here's the thing with that whole VR world. Nervous. So yeah, you could, you would be able to actually perform surgery and that would be super helpful. Right. Uh, Harvard medical school does stuff with this. I was actually watching a video on it. Mm -hmm. They're leading innovators with this kind of thing. So you can actually kind of do a surgery once, once they get the accuracy of your, your hand and sure. things like that. So there's that, but then it also opens up, you know, all these, you just become whoever you want to be in this virtual world. Um, but when people want yeah, to, which strange, it has implications. We don't have any idea. It's a huge opportunity though, because when people want to live in a virtual world, you sell them virtual goods. Right. And they buy virtual goods. That's, that already happens in video games all the time. Yeah, I know, like me. You ain't got to tell me. I have something to play Fortnite. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. It's a quote unquote free Ooh, game. It's going to be a skin. I, Dad, I need 10 bucks for the skin. You need 10 bucks for what now? A skin? To, for, for, for a graphic to show up on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Throw a fit if you don't. Yeah. Will it keep you, will it, will it keep you happy for a little while? Yeah. Okay. Well, will it make you happy? All right. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I, 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 I'm not shocked whatsoever by the fact that there would be virtual surgery. But what about, what if it ever happens that, if you think about it, because we know, like one of the guys we work with, whose son is a computer genius. And can you imagine him? Like, he may be a better surgeon at 13 than, <laughs> like, if it's really video game based. Yeah, well, he, he can already learn everything he needs to pass the MCAT on YouTube. Yes. Which is another tr like trending topic these days is the fact that all these medical students are, if so there's these medical students that are scoring really high on the MCAT or, or maybe they're medical doctors. Maybe they don't go through and get their full license or whatever, but they're really good at teaching uh -huh. and they start teaching all this information online. So you have all these books and you have all these resources right. to, to go through medical. Well, oh, that's man. just getting into medical school. But then once you're in medical school, you have all this information you have to take in. It's available on YouTube. There's people in other countries. Yeah. So that's hard because YouTube has a really hard time filtering misinformation, which sure when it's for entertainment purposes, whatever. That was the thing. Yeah. They were talking about too. Is like, how do you know about like the quality of the different videos? And mm -hmm. it's interesting talking about schools. Uh, it's probably been six, probably five, six years ago. I would say maybe five years ago. Um, the school Wofford college where I play football, they had a football game. And it was this torrential downpour where there's no, nobody was there. It was insane to be there. I was there with Ben Daniel and we held down the tent and watched the football game. It was crazy. Wind was blowing 30 miles an hour, but before it got really bad, the president of the other school parked right next to me. And so we met and 
we were talking. I said, I've got a couple of questions I want to ask you before, um, like, but we knew there was going to be torrential downpour. And so, um, he said, sure. I said, you got a couple of minutes to grab a beer. And so I said, um, all right. So you got all these, these different things that are going on about, um, the way that online education is going. And I talked about like traditional education and how I just, you know, I was looking at it from like an investment standpoint, like, how do you, what happens here? Because you got like, this is not, this is a train wreck waiting to happen. And I was like, yeah, I'm just, what am I missing? I just, you know, I want to, and uh, I was like, you know, cause you have online education it's free. And I just don't know how you can substantiate Wofford. It's like, see, it's probably like $60,000 a year. So mm. how are you going to substantiate Now, granted, They're not paying $60,000 a year. You're getting some, you know, you're getting aid, you're getting some different stuff. Right. So call it 40. It's 40 grand a year after endowment and all the rest. No how joke. are you going to substantiate a lot of money? And how are you going to substantiate that? I said, yeah, I just think that's a problem. You know, what are the schools doing about that? I said, do you think it's a problem? He goes, um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a major problem. Mm -hmm. I said, so I'm not missing anything. He said, um, uh, nope. Sounds like you pretty much understand the whole thing. <laughs> and I kind of laughed. I said, uh, what are you going to do about it? And he looked at me, he said, I'm going to retire. Yeah. He's that's my plan. He goes, yeah. but as for what the next person's going to do about it. I don't know. Oh my gosh. And so I said, so it really is that bad. He goes, yes, it's that bad. Of course it's that bad. Yes. It's exactly what you think it is. Education, higher learning and education is going to change dramatically. It's the president of a very prestigious school, that very well-known school. Yeah. I mean, when I want to learn a skill today, I get on YouTube. I don't go to I a know. local technical college and take a couple courses on, like if I want to learn graphic design, I can go sign up and have to drive to the campus in person and take courses from, I don't know who, right. Or I can get on, I can get direct tutelage from someone who's a, a renowned graphic designer who has a portfolio to show and they have free content on YouTube yeah. and step by step how you can get started. And I could sit in my pajamas. I know my, my son always used to say, Daddy says he hopes we don't go to college and that's almost correct. I would say, I said, no, that's not what I said. I said that I'm, I hope you're smart enough to not want to go to college Yeah, because yep. I believe that someone who was truly trying to get educated in anything that they were really trying to devour somewhere, that would be the last place they would go. Like if you wanted to learn, pick a subject. Now there are certain, certain things you have to go. You want to become a doctor, you have to go there. You have to have your calling card. There's a play. I'm not saying there's not a place for it, but if you want to devour a subject, you're not going to go there mm -hmm. because most of those folks aren't up to date. <laughs> most of the stuff that's like newer science and lots of stuff that are happening right now. It changes every week. Correct. It change, you can't be teaching a curriculum that you were teaching 10 years ago. Correct. Come on. That's crazy. Now, but with all that being said. I do believe in a liberal arts education, but I do believe in learning the ability to think sure that that's important. Oh, right. But learning, you know, getting uh, a sociology degree or an English degree, unless you're going to be a teacher, there's nothing wrong with being a teacher. We need more teachers, but come on like that. Mm, that's not going to work out well for you for what you probably want to do in life. If yeah. you want to go and not make very much money and teach people English and become a great teacher, then great. Don't bitch and moan when you don't make any money. Yeah. But it still works on the same, you know, it works with supply and demand. Sure. Uh, you know, the whole college education, the, the whole talk track was based off the fact that there was a, a high demand for college educated people and the supply was low. And now right. the marketplace is saturated with it. Right. And what the market needs now are tradesmen, people Correct. who have technical skills, Correct. people who Welders. can work on something, people who can actually, you know, they go to Clark. work, they go to work. And when they leave that day, there was something that exists that didn't exist mm -hmm. when they got to work that day or something is fixed that was not operational or functional when they got there that day. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to um, the, the contractors that were helping me at closing at the house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, took weeks to get certain people out there to work on certain things, rather it was brick masons. And then sure. I had to do some stuff with the, uh, the AC unit. And I told the guys, I said, uh, I said, man, I said, if the demand's this high, I figured I'd hire some more people. And he goes, mm -hmm. we can't hire more people. They're not available. Mm -hmm. Because this of the change in immigration, right? The Southern border. Can... 
That is true. Yeah. <laughs> the immigrant. Well, yeah. All the people. There, there were no immigrants hey, that showed up to my house. I'm not a hater. Right. I'm just saying, like in our old neighborhood, you'd see you'd see a whole bunch of Hispanic people frame a house in a day, mm-hmm. a whole day, an elevated two story house, three stories, day. There's taco trucks out there, boy. There's Mexican music rolling. Yep. But they are killing it, and um, that's certainly not anti-Hispanic. I I love it. It's I think incredible. It's, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. It's a work ethic that we all need to relearn because we used to have that a long time ago. But college became essentially free because you can borrow the money. It's not real yeah, anyway. Exactly. And what you're doing is you're taking a, a 17 year old who knows nothing. I'm borrowing a ton of money. Is, isn't it? Isn't it crazy that science is now saying that your prefrontal cortex isn't fully developed until you're 30. It moved from 26 to 30 recently. And you can take a 17 year old who, you know, has an underdeveloped brain scientifically. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm that, that's not my sure. words. These are what I've read from scientific sure. journals. You say, here's a person with an underdeveloped brain and I'm going to give them a loan. That's crazy. That is crazy that that's, that's legal. Hey, what was the thing that you were talking about? But you were talking about earlier before we were even talking about biohacking. Mm-hmm. What is that all about? So <laughs> I start when you start talking about the brain, it made me think about that. Yeah, talking about people like on the internet. You can buy these kits now online for, for these biohacking kits. People are trying to biohack their own genes. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a uh, human gene editing to where you're able to go in, Sheesh. you're able to go in and, uh, I, I say you are able to Sci- scientists are able to go in and literally alter the genetic makeup of any, of themselves. Li- any living thing. And change it. So the the thought is, wait a minute. Did you see the thing on Netflix about this? I watched this. Uh-huh. The guy was trying to make a, a glow in the dark dog. I didn't see the thing on Netflix, but I know there's something. He's a dog on. breeder. He's trying to make glow in the dark dogs. Mm-hmm. He's like, why not? I mean, because there's this one bug that glows in the dark. I take the DNA from here. I infuse it in the dog. It's a glow in the dark dog. Yeah. So so geneticists have studied genes for years, and what they have figured out is that I forget the acronym for it, but they have uh, an enzyme, a a protein Mm -hmm. that essentially attacks the genes and and can splice the gene at any targeted area attached to it is an RNA um, that then encodes or inserts a new code into the gene itself. It's like snipping it out and sticking in a new one. Yes. And so if you say, okay, well, I mean, hypothetically, and I don't even know if it's hypothetical, but hypothetically, you could say, I want to change the gene so that I have, I develop a, I'm twice as muscular as I am now. Anything that's encoded in your genes or not can be put there or taken out. Right. So the idea is you could treat, you know, certain illnesses, genetic illnesses. You're able to just cut those out of your genes and put the healthy portion back in. But... There are people who've gotten their hands on this and they want, they said that it shouldn't, the, the, the quote unquote, the, uh, the man shouldn't have control over this, like big pharma sure, and things like yeah, that. Yeah. So we should have these kits. Oh yeah. And they sell these homemade kits. Right. They're sending them out. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Because it's a low cost. It's, it doesn't cost a whole lot to do it. Now this is way over my pay grade and way over my head. I'm just, right. just reading about it. You need it. to watch that Netflix on this because it's been a little while, but I did watch this. Yeah. And so they, they're, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Because it's like we can treat all these genetic deformalities. Um, we can make people taller. We can, you know, it's, it's, it's taking kids and saying, let's, ge- let's alter their genetic makeup. It's so kind of like my dad um, used to say, like, my, he looked a lot like me. And he'd go, man, he'd say, man, I got this hair growth thing. It's, it's working. Look at him. You go, you're, you're bald. Yeah. You're bald. He'd go, Oh God. Yeah, I know. I can't keep it on my head. I pour it right here. It just rolls off, but I have hair everywhere. It's like, it's everywhere. Chest, back. <laughs> it's well, so, everywhere. So now they could, they could take the gene. They could go into the genome. They could yeah. take, they could take the enzyme. Uh, the, the person who explained it said it's almost like you have, uh, the enzyme goes in and it's, and it's leashed by the RNA specifically. Um, what it's doing is attacking the DNA. Yeah. And it's damaging the DNA because it cuts the strand sure. and the RNA inserts the new code for whatever you're trying to put in there. And that it does that, nuts. it does that in every cell. And then that manifests 
Here's the tricky part. You have to deliver that to a cell. And, the, and I think uh, the most effective mechanism we know of to deliver that to the cell is through a virus. Right. So they implant a virus made in a lab. So that what takes does that this enzyme in, within the c- yes within the cell and damages the cell and puts in a new combination of genes. Is there anyone that thinks this, that this ends well? Is there anyone who's ever seen this at the start of a zombie movie? Because I think like. Every zombie movie I've seen in my entire life starts with this the same narrative. Right. Like, the, the virus got out of control right. before we knew what happened. It exactly. was an epidemic. And it was like, fortunately, <laughs> I was president and I yeah. killed it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is exactly how every single zombie movie ever starts. And I, but this is real. It's not. I was looking at this. I was like, is this a joke? It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It is not a joke whatsoever. And like you said, there's people who are trying to get frogs to glow or dogs. 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 They're trying to. Dog breeder. Dog breeder trying to create glowing dogs. Yes. One guy, one YouTuber got his own little kit and injected himself live. Oh, boy. Yep. Yep. So it's it's pretty crazy um, to think what we might be able to create. There's always been crazy stuff, though. But I listened to a scientist talk about it, and she said the problem is we still don't understand much sure. as much as we would like to about our genome. Exactly. We don't. We know that some things work, but we still don't understand the how. Right. And we're experimenting with things that we do not fully understand. I know. And that there's a risk. There's an there's inherent risk with that. There's always doing stuff that you don't understand. My dad. I don't know if I ever told you. My dad had a friend of his that uh, um, loved to eat leftovers. And so he would come home every night. He would, his wife would like make food from the night before and he'd just wrap stuff up. And, um, she came home one day and she said, what are you eating? She said, just some leftovers. And she said, honey, that's dog food. <laughs> that's dog food. What? And so he freaked out a little bit at first, but he was like, I like it. You know, I've been eating it for, he'd been doing it for quite a while. And she goes, that's terrible for you. You can't eat just dog food. He said, I think it's good. And next time we went to the doctor and uh, he went, to doctor and doctor said you gotta stop that that's gonna kill you and sure <laughs> eating, enough eating it, the dog food yes and sure enough it did he died from eating the dog food not exactly he was um cleaning himself in a parking lot and a truck backed over him cleaning <laughs> <laughs> like licking <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> it got him. Yeah, yeah. So there's <laughs> things we didn't understand. There's always things. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was crazy. He also said he had a. He, he said I lived on the he lived on the first story of a apartment building. He had a little balcony. So I got brand new carpet. He said my dog went right in there and crap right in the middle of the floor. He said I was so pissed. He goes I went and rubbed his nose in it. I was so mad I threw him off the balcony. I said, oh, my gosh, Dad. He goes, it's okay, okay. He, he was fine. He fell on the grass. He, he lived. He was fine. He was, he was a great dog. I had him for a long time. And uh, and uh, I said, so he, he lived? He goes, yeah, he lived. He was a good dog. He hung out. He goes, poor guy. He never learned not to not to crap on the floor, though. But, hey, to his credit, every time he did, he'd rub his own face in it and jump off the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> the, my dad told me a story the other day. And he started off with like, he's like, yeah, there's this one guy. He beat the hell out of me. <laughs> and, uh, and he was telling me about getting beat up, but he said, uh, I forget how it transpired, but he said, he's like, yeah, and that fella coming to me. And he said, what you going to do about it? And he said, and I looked at him and I told him, he said, boy, you don't want to mess with me. I could handcuff shit. <laughs> I said, what? He goes, yeah, I don't know where that came from. It just made sense <laughs> in my head right before I said it. <laughs> He goes, anyways, he beat the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's funny. Yeah. That's, that's probably a wrap. <laughs>